Church full of alcoholic drunkards. Church so full now, they can't even go to church. And they told me, if God be for you, who can be against you? So what make you think that COVID can touch me? I run COVID. COVID don't run me. God found out one thing when he allowed COVID to come. He found out that the church will stick their tail up in their butt and go high. That's why the world ain't saying now. Because one who's supposed to have faith ain't got faith. We got a bunch of preachers went to preach because they can sing. Or they dare to have a church. I'm preaching because he called me to preach. And I'm not my own. I'm not one to do a lot of entertainment or trying to make you feel like God is it. If you don't know God is it right now, then you need to go back home and go back, get in your bed and go to sleep. Because without him, if he didn't touch you, you wouldn't have got up. Even the sinner, even the whole mother. That's why he tell you, I rain on the just and the unjust. Yeah, I wake all y'all y'all up. Yeah, all y'all is supposed to be my children, but you ain't. Because I told you in the word, you must be born again. I ain't said go to church again. God, I'm here again. And I'm beginning to love preaching. And don't nobody have to pay me to do nothing for God. Just tell me you want me to do it. Got preachers now, you don't pay them enough, they ain't coming. But let's get this started. You know, the day for the beef, Founder's Day, and me and my wife is the founder. But I just can't figure out if I can preach what I need to sit down. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men. I ain't got no reason to be sitting down. If I be lifted up from the earth. I'll draw all men. I ain't got nothing to talk about me. You know, a lot of people be trying to figure out what this 911 stand for. You know, and I sit back in my office. I said, should I talk about that? He said, the founder. One day, I was just sitting on my bed, minding my own business. I was a minister in Church of Living God. And the Lord started talking to me. He said, son, I want you to go put Pastor Terry Simmons on his Bible. And I'm like, God, you tripping. He said, I want you to go put Pastor Terry Simmons on the Bible. I said, God, I'm in somebody else's church. So I called my wife. That's why you got to have a godly wife. You can't have no wimp that'll just let you do what you want to do. She got to be spiritual too to be able to talk to you. That's why all these people talking about first lady this, first lady that. Sit your tail down somewhere. But anyway, it needs to be godly. So I called her and asked her, I said, baby, I said, God tripping. She said, what are you doing? What are you saying? I said, he told me to go put Pastor Terry Simmel on the Bible, and I'm at Church of Living God. How am I going to do that? She said, get up and go put Pastor Terry Simmel on the Bible. So I went down to the Bible bookstore, put Pastor Terry Simmel. He said, put the date. It was 9101. So I'm walking around with a Bible that said Pastor Terry Simmel, and I ain't pastor. But right then, he was telling me I was calling you. Pastor Dean. Three months later, I was pastoring. Then he told me it was a mercy that I go to preaching. Ten days later was 911. 9-11. Ten days. So I'm like, God, you, you got something. Then after I started preaching. He told me, you can't wear cornerstone on your robe no more. Because you ain't they 
preacher. I need you to come in the apostleship. Now, I'm just getting to preach. So I took it. He said, now I want you to put 911 on your robes. Because it's a mercy that somebody preached the truth. And I started saying, I'll go. They put me off the radio. I had a radio broadcast on 16, 911, but they put me off of there. Because I'll talk about sisters. And I'll talk about how the preacher let big, fat, nasty Johnny preach all over everywhere. And they don't have no problem with it. I got a problem with it. So, is that my introduction? We live in a day of deception. And the church is the one deceiving everybody. Because we're supposed to be a light and we just a dog against the world. Preachers are dog, the church, the usher, the deacon, everybody is, is dog. Sisters everywhere. You know, when the, when the church used to be about gifts in rain or gifts shacking, the church let it go on now. It won't go on here until I die. I don't care if people don't want to come where the truth at. That's why I put Hebrew 9.27 on him, the end. Because when you die, every word that I don't preach is going to judge you. Y'all got to say that. Galatians, the first chapter. You know, some people don't know what Hebrew 9.27 say, but it said, And as it is appointed unto man once to die. You know we always say we got to die with some. It is appointed on you one to die. But after the judgment, he said, after you die, I'm going to judge you for all you didn't do. Boy, that's rough right there. Now, I don't know why y'all want to play church. If I ain't going to be real in church, I can go on back to the butter club and do that thing like I used to do. But when you come on God's side, you can't do them things you used to do. But the church, y'all know a lot of y'all still doing it. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I see y'all ain't clap over there. Because you might have told on yourself. Galatians, uh, the first chapter. Boy, I wish I could sing. I say the Bible is right and somebody wrong. You can go, you can go against it all you want. But in the day you die, he said, I'll laugh at your calamities. He going to laugh at the stuff y'all thought y'all were getting over with because y'all said, Apostle don't know what I'm doing. No, Apostle just didn't say nothing about it. Let me get on in here because I feel, I feel pretty good, y'all. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's a founding day or that, that, that God just touched me with some more anointing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm glad somebody realized I look good. Galatians 1, beginning at the sixth verse. My title said, There is no other gospel. So I don't know why people don't start changing. He tell you, uh, uh, in 1989, the word is selling in heaven. He tell you, in the Malachi, he changing not. And y'all favorite scripture, Hebrews 13, 8. He the same. Y'all look at me scared to say it. See, don't act like you don't know the scripture now. You're always telling people when you ain't living by it. Let's go. Y'all ready? I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Y'all hear he said that? Paul was telling these people unto another gospel. He said, which is not another. How are these people accepting gays and stuff and, and then shacking going and homemonging and clubbing and all that? It rains in the nose, it rains in the ears. How do they let all that go on? Come in the club with days of Duke's on. How do they let that go on? He said, which is not another. But there is be some that trouble you because you preach the truth. And we'll prevent the gospel of Christ. But though we or any other angel from heaven 
preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have huh, preached unto you, let him be a curse. As we say before, so say I again. If any man preach, he don't went to the man. Now he, he talked about the angel first, but he won't talk about the man. He said, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that then what we have received, let him be a curse. He said, But do I now persuade man or God? Or do I seek to please man? For if I Yet please, man, I shall not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you. Oh, <laughs> that's me. Brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, Heavenly Father in Jesus. God has said right now, have your way. Do what you decide to do in this place, God, but have free course. God, I have none of my eyes that I can see whatever the money spirit you desire for me to see. I have none of my eyes that I can discern the thoughts and the tents of these people hard. God, I have none of my ears that I can hear directly from you. But most of all, God, I have none of my mouth that I will say nothing to myself, God. But all that you want me to say, God, but your servant has some of you that you anoint every person ears in him that they can hear what the Spirit is about to say to the church. Holy Ghost, have your way. And God, we forever give the praise, we give the thank. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And every heart can say amen, amen, amen. And you can have your seat. I went before God and so many times people think I wear a robe just to wear a robe, but in a change of time, God has be having my robe to say something. And the reason why he got this one said Hebrews 9.27, the end, because when everyone hear me preach, whether it's one time, two time, it will be the truth. And after you die, he going to judge. And nobody can get away from what God is going to do. The world has a social or a system set up by man that tried to make man happy without God. The world tried to make man think that he could be happy without God. And y'all know a lot of y'all trying to be happy with God and you're miserable. I've been down that road running after this woman, running after that woman, clubbing all the time, and every time I come back and say, I ain't going to do the same thing. Wasting my money behind, fooling, and then, hey, neglecting what? Yourself. Every time you turn around, you broke. You run after this woman. I couldn't even go to a restaurant, not even a McDonald's, because somebody was going to call somebody and tell them I was with somebody, and then I got a problem. Wouldn't have busted out. You know, that ain't no good life. I might have wouldn't been selling dope. The only one wasn't looking for me was the police. And you know that's a miserable life that every time you go home, you can't even go home, you can't even take nobody, you can't sit down in a restaurant, you can't even have a conversation because somebody going to call somebody. That's a miserable life. Every time you go home, it's just unhappy. And church should be coming the same way. Very unhappy in God's sight. He don't want to put no police in there. You know, he, 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 he got the Holy Ghost in there. But the church has begun to desensitize God's word. Y'all know that y'all know what that is? Desensitize God's word. The church today is desensitizing sin. They make sin look so small. See, they downsize it. Everybody now, they don't want to talk about sin no more. They want everybody to figure out themselves that they are right. I'm wondering what happened to the Bible. Who changed the word? I don't care what translation you get. Who changed it? I just looked at the word, see what the sensitized was. 
It said to make less sensitive. So when sin is bad in God our sight, we downplay it. You, let me tell you how y'all downplay it. I ain't doing that much. I need to explain it to you, Jeff. He told Adam and Eve, the day you eat of that tree. See, you talking about I ain't did that much. They did one thing. And got them put out the gun. So now we still is thinking we can do what we want to. See, Jesus ain't died for Adam, him. He died for me. Hebrews 9, 27. The end. Because after you die, the judgment stone. And see, that's what the church don't got away with. They don't want to talk about judgment no more. They don't want nobody to judge them no more. The world judge you. And then they tell me I can't judge nobody, but God told me to be a fruit inspector. If I want a good salad, I got to get good fruit. I got a good, good tomato. I can't get no brown lettuce. So when I start looking at you, I ought to see the word of God. Not the disobedient part. Because I'm going to still see the word whether you're living or not. This is what it said. He said, to make someone react less strongly to something such as a violence or pain. So I went a little further. Desensitized. It is the smallest sin which had which paved the way of the greater sin. See, when you make it small, it becomes big. You know what I'm saying? You made it small, but now it's law. So now what you did know about God, that's why he said, let us magnify him. See, he looked little you, but he's big to me. Y'all see what I'm saying? He said, he said, the sister tie. He said, it is the smallest sin which have paid the way of greater. Belief in God is a loss overnight. See, when you make your sin small and when you want with God, you start downplaying and you don't lose overnight. Because see, the devil, don't, he don't overtake you all at once. See, we try to add like Jezebel, seducing spirit, and deception ain't in the church no more. I mean, it's plain to you if it's in the church. Look at all those of him. We look like we saved. Now we're going to desensitize how, what say mean. But the scriptures tell me, therefore, if any man be in Christ, oh, oh, you can't be old. You can't downplay that one. Mm. Got something for y'all. I'm telling y'all. This is what he said. He said, he said, Belief in God is a loss overnight. See, this journey began happening to who you're around. They started saying, man, you know, come on, man, they too strict. They just ain't right. You don't know God trying to be a blessing to you. Because what's going on in the world? Hey, you know, like I said, we've been having church. We've been having prayer. We've been having everything. We ain't stopping nothing. And ain't nobody been sent uh, in the hospital from COVID. And we hug and we do everything. But the wisdom that we have, we understand to social distance ourselves because we know there's some Uncle Tom in churches that'll tell that we have a church and we're not social distant. So just in case the police come in, they see we six feet apart. See, that's the wisdom of God. See, that, they ain't got no dumb. This is what he said, though. He said, he said, believing in God isn't lost overnight, but rather over a journey, considering a bad decision. See, you start, you start making bad decisions. Like, I don't care what they say. I'm going out tonight. No. See, that's a bad decision. And see, I'm going to just make it better. You go out that night and then you meet somebody you like that you used to like and then they got AIDS now. Oh, 
That means you just went out one more time. And I just want you to take down and put in your phone Hebrew 9.27. Because you know when age come on the scene. And then if I could say, what's the worst death? I mean, what's it worth it? Because, see, this is what we go after. We go after stuff and things because the enemy knows still what you like. So he don't give you what you don't like. See, he couldn't bring don't to me. He said, bad decision. That's how it be desensitized. Then he said, bad friend. It can be family member. Because I'm putting it in there. He ain't got it on the, on the but family members, because they start saying, you go to church too much. Y'all church ain't nothing but a coat. But see, when you look at it, what do coat mean? Because if I believe in God, I am coated to him. When I got saved, I got saved because of him. When you, when you find somebody you love, you want to be with them, don't you? I don't club no more. So, so I come, I club in the church. I get to the church. I get where, where, I, where, I, where I'm comfortable at. Where the new man is used to. He said, bad environment. See, that, that would desensitize you. Because you, you don't know that it don't happen rapidly. Which is more important? You know, people ask me questions like that. Which is more important, praying or reading your Bible? You know, everybody plays tricks in the, in the church that go to church. They ain't saved, but they play tricks on you because they try to say. So they said, praying or reading your Bible. I said, but the question I asked, breathing in or breathing out, or what, which is more important? You need both of them. <laughs> I need to pray. I need to, because I can't pray nothing back to him but his word. So I need to give word back to him because if you're praying just a myth, it's no good. So praying in. How you going to pray to God and you don't know his word? Tell me, I want somebody else who. That ain't, that, now you don't want to pray that. That ain't in the Bible. He said, which is more important? Praying or reading your Bible? So the question I had. Breathing in or breathing out? You gotta, we got to talk to the thing. But see, the church has so changed. My, my message today to you all, I know y'all are waiting on it. Church people. I'm talking to these church people because I'm just not talking to Cornerstone. I'm talking to all the church in America. And Pensacola is bad. We got so many churches, but now all of them closed. But the titty bar open, the liquor stove in the open, school are open, huh? Everything over. And they talking about watch me on TV. You know them people sleep. They used to be sleeping in church. So my message is church people. What are we going to do with the Bible? This is what God going to judge us about. Y'all tell me first. Because everything in here come to Hebrews 9.27. Everything I preach to you, then what we're going to end up. I don't care how bad you've been, how good you've been, almost good. Almost good going to hell. Let me just tell y'all that. For all y'all almost good, all y'all that play tired and don't do nothing else, ain't no good. I, I, I just got my list saying here, those that, that cannot worship God are right, and do not worship him alone, they ain't no good. This is what it said. One of my favorite scriptures now. Number 32 and 23. But if you will not do so, you will not do what the word said. He said, behold, he said, look, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure. Now he told you, he ain't said might be, could be, what the preacher said, what anybody said. He said, be sure. Your sin will find you out. So don't desensitize 
Don't make that small. See, we make the scripture small. But church people, I ain't talking to the people in the world. I'm talking to those that in here in church that desensitize de what sin is. Y'all call it whatever y'all want to call it. When I be talking to him, he call it sin. He's telling us these things because God wants us to know you can't play with me. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. That's why I said people can't get mad at me because I give you the scripture. Now, if you mad with anybody, you got to be mad with God. If you want to take the scripture down and then go home and don't read them, that's on you. But listen to what it said, Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. He said, let us draw nigh with a true heart. He said, first of all, a true heart. He said, you got to have a true heart. And people in church ain't got a true heart. They don't love God because he's God. They love God for when they can get some from God. Church people. What are we going to do with what the Bible says? I ain't talking about your preacher. I ain't talking about T.D. J. One of the Bible. George Miles. I ain't talking about none of them crew. I'm talking about the Savior that sent his son down to 42 generations. This robe came down the flesh and became the word. The word became the flesh and flesh. And he dwelt among us. And he beheld all that we beheld all the glory. Then he gave you a 66 book. And tell you, they didn't have this back in the Old Testament. So, but now you got it. He said, let us draw nigh with a true heart, full assurance of faith. And now the church don't, have, don't believe they got to have faith. Church ain't got faith now. You know why? They desensitize it. They start talking about you should have wisdom when God tells us to have faith. Huh? And wisdom comes from God, but now the preacher said you got to be smart and have the wisdom of God. Well, wisdom comes from God, and he tells you you should have faith. Prove it to me, Pastor Simon. Prove it to me. He said in, in Hebrews 11 and 1, he said, Now faith is the sudden thing hoped for, there is a thing not seen. I see my protection. And now we ain't got that faith in that. We ain't got faith in that. We, we preach these things, have comfort in these things, but when the pandemic came, we lost them scripture. The church don't lost them scripture. Look what it said in Hebrews 11 and 6. He said, but without faith. He tell you again. Now, Hebrews 10 said, assuring of faith. With a true heart. But see, we was close stuff that we didn't believe. This is what he said. He said, he said, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. So he's telling now a true faith and true assurance, a assurance. And then he said, but without faith. So that's why the church shut down. They didn't have faith. He said, for he that come to God must believe. Now, you can't say you love God and don't believe. Church people, what we going to do with the Bible? Because y'all can quote anything y'all want to. Y'all can go buy all the books, all them big time TV advances you got. They just making money because, look, I bought one book and got sick to see. And the same thing they buy, they put in them book. If you were to get in this book, you have everything they talking about. Because they, if they talking about God, they got to get it out the Bible. People talking about, I'm just, I, just, I just love T.D.J. He always talking about faith and the promise of God. Well, you get your Bible, you can get the faith and the promise too. He said, for he that come to God must believe. Huh? You hear what he said? Must believe that he is. I believe he'll heal. I believe he'll redeem him. When you don't think nothing of me, he think I'm marvelous. See what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Church people, what are we going to do with the Bible? Because, see, you constantly worry about what man said, but you ain't worried about what God said. When we don't live right to God, I don't care how fine you are, you built fat. You ain't fine to God because God ain't looking for fineness. God ain't looking for good looking. Now, I ain't saying let yourself go now. That ain't what I'm saying. Because, see, some of y'all think y'all be don't got in tune with God because y'all don't got fat. That ain't what I'm saying. That ain't, that ain't not what I'm saying. I ain't going to let y'all go lie on me. This is what he said. He come back in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. You see what I'm saying? He said, examine yourself. 
See what I'm saying? Church people want to examine themselves. Then they tell us don't look like the world. Y'all tell me why so many church people look like the world. I looked at a couple of YouTube preachers, and, and, and the men got on tight pants, and, and I didn't know whether that's a woman or a man. You walking one way, I don't know what it is. You, he tell us we shouldn't do that. But we look like the world, and we say, ain't nothing wrong with it. They had a preacher on the other day talking about his wife. What the man name? What the woman name? Made and good. And the lady told her that she, she said, your testimony don't go with your life. And the, dude, the preacher, the pastor said, oh, we ain't having that. We ain't having that. She can wear whatever she want to wear. Now the lady was trying to help. I know you ain't saved. I know you ain't come by God. I know you got another gospel. You got another gospel. Because if, if somebody's trying to help her, you will help her. That's, that's what he said. Examine yourself. Why do you be in the faith? So that lets you know everybody in the faith. Church people on this final day, examine yourself. If you die right now, with Hebrew 9, 27, appeal to you. You let everybody talk about putting some wings on you on Facebook. That ain't doing, them people don't know God. Because ain't no angels got no wings anyway. Not when they come down and have sex with a woman. I don't think no woman going to let no, no angel come with no wings trying to, you know. You know the angel came down and had, they had intercourse with the women. They couldn't have came down with no wings. One y'all would have ran. Most of y'all women run from a, man, a same man, and he ain't got no way. He too saved. Child, he, mm -mm. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. See, that's what the, the Bible do. That's why people don't like it. And you know one thing? When you start missing church, getting away from church, you better know one thing. This is the time. It's, it's, I'm telling y'all, if the enemy got a plan, I tell people all the time, it, I understand people at the work, I ain't got no problem with that because the Bible said a man don't work shouldn't eat. I understand that. But when you start getting in the place and your face start to sanitize, you know there's something wrong. Uh, okay. I'd rather make $6 an hour then to make 20 and burn. I, I just went, I just did just, just, just mean. Listen what he said. He said, let us draw a knife with a true heart and full of sure in faith. You know he said, he said, have a full of sure that you love God. Have full of sure that you living right. You ain't nobody got to tell you. I don't care what preachers and people say about me. He's too holy. You ain't lie. Thank you for God giving you the discernment. When they start talking about I'm too holy, I'm this and that, you're right. He tell us to be holy. He ain't told me now I'm trying to be Baptist, Methodist, the Emmy Zion, none of that stuff. People got it twisted. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Listen to what he say. He said, let us draw a knife with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our heart sprinkled from an evil country. We shouldn't even be sitting in the church talking about, you know, I, I don't know what it's about her, but I just don't like her. Yeah. What? Yeah. You say? Yeah. Child, this just, just, just church right here, man, Conestone, man, they, they, got, they got respect of person, this and that. You just ain't want to get to be in the, in the respect of the person. Yeah. Any righteous person got respect for another righteous person. We just don't have respect for an unrighteous person. You know, we love them, but, you know, you, you can't hang with them. He said, what light and dark to have it? We ain't, I ain't got no being to be with nobody unrighteous. But church don't want to say that now because they say, you got to love everybody. Everything you got to do is love. If I preach hell about you, that's love. If I tell you where you're nasty stuff at, that's love. Church people. That's all I'm giving you is the Bible. What you going to do with it? 
Don't y'all forget this scripture. Now, I ain't preaching about Hebrews 9, 27, but I just want y'all to read it while I'm preaching. Because after you die, all y'all in here playing church, all y'all in here ain't got a, a pure hole. He said, examine yourself. He's telling us that. He's telling us that because God loves us like that. He said, an evil country. He said, and our body watch with pure water. Now, y'all know Ephesians 5, 26 says, watch it by the water of the word. So I keep telling y'all, the church need a bath. I ain't going to no church that ain't preaching hell about me. You know why? Ask me why. Because he said, how can you hear without a preacher? So if I'm going somewhere where well, he ain't hear from God, Everybody in the church. Now y'all know, y'all know I'm just I'm just I'm 62. So I come from they say the old school. <clears throat> so I'm trying to figure out when I used to come in the house, you come in the house with a hat on and you keep it on, you get a whooping. These yeah. jokers in hat in churches with hat on. Huh? What? Men with a hat on? Not in here. If you don't want to move your hat, we got three eggs. Them two blocks. Get that one. Because we got the whole of the standard that God has gave. <coughs> that was wrong with the church. They don't took the standard down. What that word is? They don't desensitize. What was important to God ain't important to us now. Y'all don't got to say that, but he going to judge them. He said, woe to the shepherd. That don't scatter my sheep. He said, he said, see, all that's in the Bible. Y'all, I know y'all ain't know that was in the Bible. But God trying to tell us something because he wanted to know. This is what he said in Matthew 17, 5. He said, while he yet spent. Y'all hear that? He said, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of, out of the cloud said, this is my beloved apostle Sim, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear you him. And people don't want to hear that because I'm going against the odd. Somebody said, all the church over here and Conan's only sitting over here. They said, young people can't do this. We ain't miss nothing. And not that everybody's right, but we're in the right house. That make a lot of sense. I love God because he just how he tell us that. This is what he said in Acts 5 and 29. He said, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than my dad, rather than my mom, rather than my sister, brother. So if God word said this, you ought not to care nothing about what your mom and dad them say. If you say, now if you just go into church, I understand you, you, you going to be, you know, they your God. But if God shall go, y'all ain't got to sit in there. This is what he said. In Ephesians 2, 1 and 2, he said, and you have, he quick. He said, when I got you saved, I quicken you with life. Y'all hear God say that? So if he quickened you and gave you life, how did you die? How did you go back to what you used to? You know, I told y'all one thing. He came back with some friends. You know, when God don't clean the house and you don't put his spirit in there, the, the, the spirit he got out of you, it come back with some friends, worse than him. They come back to complete you. But then I came back, church people, who or what came to your house? You know that stuff that you were doing, that you stopped doing, it started coming back. But who or what came back? Did a man come back or did that... Bad thing you were doing come back. And now I'm coming to tell you, church people, what you going to do with the Bible? Man can change it all they want. It ain't going to do no good. Now I tell everybody, I wish it was split down the middle, but it's 39, 27. 39 Old Testament, 27 New. 
I wish it was split, but it's split. Because he's going to judge about all. See, what I like about God, he's just he good like that. And I can't say nothing about him, man. He's just good like that. This is what he said in 2 Timothy 2, 11 and 13. He said, it is a faithful saying. See, it's faithful what I'm saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Huh? Y'all hear that? If we suffer, I'm willing to suffer. Is y'all willing to suffer? See, half of y'all going to sleep. Half of y'all don't got coming. Y'all don't got y'all telling me a song, and now y'all y'all don't got sad. You know why you got sad? Because you ain't doing what the Bible said. Y'all can get up here and put on showmanship, but you ain't got it in your heart. See, that's what I'm talking about. You ought to be ashamed of yourself to be singing the gospel. And now, all of a sudden, the gospel ain't still good to you. See, we got a lot of uh, singers and actors in the church. If I was singing a song with God, I would feel it to the deep part of my heart. The wrong people got voice. They killed me at this place. Um, I'm finna sing, but take all my mistakes for love. I gotta live. <laughs> cold. Then they open up their mouth. Where the cold went? You liar. No, you were finna blow the top off. Listen to what we do. Let me give you, we make some reckless choices. Can I talk to y'all? The church people. I ain't talking to people I ain't say. I'm talking to church people. We make some reckless choices. What you mean, Pastor Summer? Facts. To show how one reckless choice to disobey God caused man to fall from God's favor. That's a regular choice. You heard it said? Let me say it again because I don't want y'all to miss. To disobey God's word make a man fall or a woman fall from God's favor. But preachers tell you, you, got the, you can get the promise of God, even though you ain't obeying God. See, that's a liar. That's why there is no other gospel. They sit here and tell you, everybody that die, go to heaven. You know that joke ain't going to heaven, man. That was your brother. You know how he lived. Say, fact, principle. To remember that disobedience to God leads to a broken fellowship with him. So when you disobey God's word, the principle said that you got a broken relationship with God. And we sit in the church, know we got broken relationship because we letting anything go on around us, anything we do, and we, we take it as, we, what that word is? We desensitize it. We make it small because it's me doing it. But when somebody else do it, you say, man, that's a crying shame. You know God ought to send them straight to hell, but you ain't went yet. You ain't prophesied on yourself yet. Church people, that's what we do. We lie, we do all kinds of stuff. Y'all ain't, ain't got to say nothing, I believe y'all don't Y'all must have went to sleep. But I got the application. I gave you the facts. I gave you the proofs. I got to give you the application. To realize that if we seek God blessing, then we must be prepared to obey him in all things. So that means you thinking you're going to get the promise even though the preacher told you. But this right here said you can't get them. Yeah, but you want me to give you something good? Yes, sir, give you something good. Don't find yourself outside of heaven, inside of hell. Even though you're in the church, you know, I understand how we do it. He said, and, and, and you have he quicker who were dead in trespass and sin. See, he said, I already knew where you were. You were dead and trespass and sin. That's why I sent Jesus. And now y'all want to downplay Jesus. Say he ain't nobody but the, uh, God's son. I mean God or the disciple. But then you come back and say you believe the word. But you don't do the word with the word with Jesus. How do you do that? How do you do that? Somebody got to be. Y'all know what the word is. I say I can't get everybody to say it. Because they already know. They don't make God small. They don't minimize who God is. But God said church people. You can't go against that. It's already settled in heaven. And that's what the church is doing. They, they want to get away from it. He said, where in time past 
you walked according to the course of this world. He said, at time past, you was at the bunny club, Apostle Summer. At time club past, you was a hoe. He said, but I quickened you and made you a new man. And now you, I still can do it, but I don't want to. Because I'm born again. Which is more important? Praying or reading the Bible? Pastor Simmons said, what's more important, breathing in or breathing out? Because you know once you stop, you stop breathing in or breathing out, you dead. So that lets you know. See, that's why I don't like Apostle Simmons. That's why I wouldn't go to his chair for nothing. You see what I'm saying? He always makes you realize that I'm a dummy. This is what he said. He said, according to the prince of the power of air, Satan, the spirit that now work in the children of disobedience. He said, that's who we're working for. He said, he's working in the children of disobedience. So it brings me to Galatians, where Paul started talking to the church and said, they're preaching another gospel. He said, but I'm trying to tell the Galatians, that is another gospel. I'm trying to tell Pensacola in the world, that is not another gospel. No way you could be to get the promise of God in sin. Why let somebody lie to you? Get the Bible and read it. You know all y'all smart. This is what it said. He said, I marvel that you are soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So he said, you give these false prophets to desensitize God's word and moving you from the gospel of God to another gospel. He said right here, y'all see it right there, y'all see it in y'all Bible. It ain't, they, ain't trans, they couldn't translate this that good. He said, which is not another gospel. So that means if somebody telling you, you good, just coming to church, you already know that ain't right. But Hebrews 10, 25 says, forsake not to assemble yourself as the man of son's ear, as the day, as you see the day approaching. He said, as we see everything going against God right now. Everything in the church, they don't care if church ain't going on. How ain't nobody mad because they ain't in church? But that means somebody that was preaching to these people before wasn't preaching faith to them. They were preaching the promise to them. So now that now they need faith, they ain't got faith. And now they're mad with us. That's why I told y'all, Cornerstone is under attack because of our faith in God. You look at the church right now. They ain't scared of the pandemic. They ain't scared of the COVID. They scared to die. But the ways of sin is death. They ain't much scared of that. See, they ain't scared of God. Church people. What we gonna do with the Bible? Y'all ask yourself right now. If God was to allow you to die right now, that ain't no breathing in or breathing out. Where would you spend eternity? Because you can't tell me you don't believe in hell and you believe in heaven. They just like praying and reading. This is what it said. He said, what? Which is not another. He said, but there is some that trouble you, they're against you, will prevent the gospel of Christ. You see, y'all going down with Apostle Simulat? That I mean, y'all don't need to be going down there, man. You got a coat. You see, you got them young people out there on that corner in the, in the rain. You see, you got them people in the cold. What the disciples did? Amen. Cold, rain, ship, water, waving. They were right with Jesus. They had the best comfort. And that's why God said, I can protect y'all because y'all are real with me. Y'all ain't caught up in what man do. Y'all is a real church that love me, that not, what that word is? Desensitizing what my words said. Because a lot of people are desensitized what God said. If he mean hell, that's what he mean. If he mean the ways of sin and death, that's what he mean. But you know you still caught on Adam and Eve because they didn't die even though God told them. Because we weren't spiritual to realize they were separated from God. That's what he said. 
He said, but though we are in an angel from heaven, he said, now if anybody come preach to you, anything different from these 66 books in the Bible, let them be a curse. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. So, you know, you think about that. Now, we ain't preaching nothing but the gospel. Amen. So now, if you're hearing another gospel, if you heard this gospel, and now they say another gospel said, it's all right if you don't go to church all the time. Uh, it's all right if you go to club every night. It's all right if you wear days of do. It's all right if you have a man in shack. It's all right. You know that's another gospel. Because yes, yes, the Bible says, have your own husband and wife. So that kills shacking. That kills fornication. So they ain't put, you know, they, they preaching that, that good gospel, that sugar coat gospel. You know, when they live, got sugar on them when they're preaching to you. We supposed to be the salt of the earth. That's what the word says. Y'all, y'all don't play, y'all ain't got to play. This is what it says. He's telling us these things because he wants us to know. This is what Romans 9, 32 and 33 said. He said, Well, for question. He said, Because they sought it not by faith. See, that faith is so key that most people go to church, but they ain't got faith. And then they said, Oh, I got the faith of the muscle seed. He ain't mean for you to stay there. He just said that's a star. But I, I, like, I, I like when them church people don't been in church a long time and just tell me, well, I got the faith of a must see. I said, you still that small? <laughs> he used that for a parable to tell you that I just want you to believe just that much. Yeah. But then want you to stay there because if you ever seen a muscle seed grow, it's one of the biggest trees it is. I'm glad I don't grow. He's telling us this. He said, he said, he said, salt by faith. He said, but as it were by the work of the law. He said, but they stumble at the stumbling stone with one Jesus. They stumble at the word. They said one time they stumble at the word of God they, because they wanted to do them. Can I get anybody to testify that in him just want to do them? They think being saved stopped you from doing you when you're supposed to be dead to you? I didn't think I was getting about to testify, but I already see y'all. You ain't got to testify. You know how you ask me how I know. The way you serve God. He number one to me. He number, he number one. Is he number one to you? Look what he said. He's telling these things because he wants to know. He said. For they stumble at the stumbling stone. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, a rock of offense. See, he already knew what he was. He said, a rock of offense. He said, Apostle, if you live, live right and you preach my word right, ain't nobody going to like you. But you ain't got the way to get to heaven for him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because I keep telling all them preachers, they keep saying that. I can't wait to get to heaven for him to say, well done. But Jesus was in the earth when he said to him. <clears throat> Why y'all waiting y'all get to heaven? You ain't going there anyway. <laughs> Only the pure heart going to see God. Don't think you're going to go there because you had two or 20,000 people in your church. Joel Steen, tell me he ain't got to talk about sin. Wait, what you preaching for? If you want to be a motivator, we could be there. Don't go tell me you're a preacher. He said, and whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. Man, there's so many church people, shame of God. Y'all, you, you just got to tell the truth in a way. Look what 1 John 2 and 3 and 4 said. That's why I said people can't get mad at me. Ella, know I've been calling them scriptures out. Remember, I've got to get you a good tablet. Don't come in with no tablet I already wrote on. Remember, you won't know where to put this at. He said, Hereby we do know that we know him, if we would. See what God said? And more people in the church ain't keeping the commandment. So if, that, if the Bible is right, then we got to be wrong. He come back and said, if you love me. I don't hear you, church. Where the crowd went? 
Loud as y'all was saying, where y'all at now? Y'all can't say nothing. You know why you can't say nothing? You ain't keeping them. One thing about church people, they don't tell a lot. They sing. I ain't gonna sing it, Trina. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. It was the best thing I ever, ever done in his own. I feel protected in his own. Never disconnected in his own. In his own. You see, the choir know the song when he was singing. Because y'all don't feel like that. You and my sister said, you better preach that song. Girl, I'm so glad you're on the Lord's side. I did a lot of praying for you. Lord, have mercy. Don't desensitize what God doing with you. Don't let nobody make it small. They've been in here a long time. They've been playing. Church people. What it said, he said, hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandment. He that says, I know him and keep not his commandment is a liar. They're going to say, see what I'm saying? He calling people liars. They didn't know that was in the Bible. They didn't know that. They said, he called him a liar. I want to go somewhere where I can be saved at. I want, I want to be somewhere somebody ain't going to be telling me I'm going to get the promise of God and I'm living in any kind of way. I ain't hearing nothing about how I'm living. But people don't understand when you preach like this, you the first one had to wear that mess. You better set yourself first before you be talking about, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk. Yeah, uh-huh. This is what he said. He said, it's a liar and the truth is not in him. He come back in 2 Thessalonians and 1, 1, 1 and 8. He said, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Now, y'all can't say that y'all don't know God. Y'all just ain't serving God. See, everybody busy. Hell, everybody busy in here. Everybody busy. See, you can't be busy when God talking to you and you know it's God. See, that, that makes me know that you can't have the spirit of God. Ain't no way you can be conversating and busy while God talking. I told y'all what busy means. B-U-S-Y. Busy on the same yoke. You're too busy. You ain't going to be able to hear what God says. And then when you get, you ain't going back to listen to YouTube because y'all don't do that. Ask me how I know. We were getting CDs away free and y'all wasn't getting them. When everybody else charged, we were getting CDs away free and we had a, we, we, hey, wasn't nobody asking for him. In the church, it said, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus. He said they obey not the gospel. What God is, God is telling us something. Do y'all hear? Do, do the church hear? Y'all ain't going nowhere else. He said repentance is not when uh, you weep, but when you change. Y'all heard that, then? He's telling us these things because he want to know. He said, but if any man preach another gospel, he don't let the angels alone. He said, let him be a curse. He said, in the temper, but do I now persuade men or God? Who, who, who I'm trying to persuade? He said, do I seek to please man? Huh? He asked him questions. That's what he's talking to the believer. Who you pleasing? I don't never want Trina to plead me before she plead God. Because, see, God might take me from her to get her attention. Now God get her. Mm-hmm. Man. But what I'm telling y'all is these are the things that God wants. God don't want you to get caught up with man, woman or man, mama, dad, and nobody. He want to be the God. He said, if you uh, put anything up before me, I'm jealous. I hear people tell me all the time, 
God number one in my life, I don't see him. He said, stop looking for someone to please your flesh and pray for someone to speak to your spirit. Stop that stuff, man. Looking for somebody to, to make you feel good. Stop trying to create a new you around the same old people. You ain't going to be able to do that. You ain't, ain't going to be able to do that. Look at what he said. He said, for if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. So you think about everybody pleading their husband, pleading their wife, pleading their children, and no better. You ain't no servant of Christ. Shoot, Jabba had, 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 had messed around and got divorced and, and came out how Trina said, you got a curfew. Grown man. I know most of y'all, y'all probably live now, how. Because y'all would think y'all can come in there when you want to. You ain't paying rent there, baby. You can get up in there. You ain't coming home drunk. And if I check you and, and you look like you're high, you ain't coming there. Because those fear. And that, them fear really want a clean vessel. Y'all don't believe Jezebel real? That's a controlling spirit. It ain't a woman. It can be a man. That's a spirit. Do y'all know what a master manipulator is? That's a controlling person. Do y'all know what a deception is? Them spirits, y'all. And a lot of them in y'all. What you think tell you not to read? That's what he said. But Paul come on down and tell the guys in the church, he said, but I certify you in order to make known to you that you can't go against the Bible. Paul said, I'm certifying that thing. You can't preach another gospel. You can't do that. He said that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Everything I've been calling in the scriptures here. So it ain't after me. He said, for I neither received I neither received it of man, neither was taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation 22. You know why they crucified Jesus? Jesus did not know how to keep his mouth shut. He did not know how to stop talking about the Father. He did not know how to tell him the Pharisee and the Sadducee, all these Baptists and Methodist church, y'all living wrong. They might want to kill me, but I couldn't find a better way to die. For the gospel, that's why James said in 1, 1 and 8, double-minded man is unstable in all the ways. Sunday you like God or love God, but right when you get out of church, I know y'all don't listen to Bill Lex no more. It's one, one old something. What is it, Leon? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, y'all don't listen to 93 no more. See, I used to be saying 93, so y'all got slick. But I got y'all now. Revelation. Y'all got it? He said for, uh, Revelation 22 and 18, he said, for I testify unto every man that hears the word of the prophets of this book. Now I keep trying to tell this church that when you hear people prophesy, if they're not prophesying the word of God, that's not prophecy. Uh -oh. See, a car a house is not prophecy from God. Because he could have told you that if you he was here. Because if you hear, he's he gonna talk to you too. But prophecy is anybody that's quoting the scripture to you. Giving you the word of God. So he, he said right here, he said, he said, For I testify unto every man that hears the word of the prophets of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plague that is written in the book. So that means if you add unto the word of God or you try to lie and justify your wrongdoing, you got every plague. Now, they ain't just talk, they ain't, I ain't going to just put that on preaching. Because we know the scripture and we change it when we do wrong. Because the scripture I said, the ways of sin is death to a person that ain't saved. I ain't going to say that when I sin. 
See, hypocrite don't mean just you just live wrong. Hypocrite means you a little bit of everything. We got any hypocrites in here? I ain't think y'all going to testify. I ain't think y'all will. Listen to what he said. He said, look what he said. He said, we're living in a generation with sin that once scrut secretly down the, the back alley, now scrut proudly down the main street. Well, sin used to creep in the church and sit in the back. Shoot, they come all the way to the front. To the front. I want, I want one of them to squat down here to me. Bless them. I'm going to prophesy to them the scripture. This is what it said. He said, he said, God shall add unto him the plague that is written in the book. And if any shall take away from the word of this book, prophecy, he said, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. I thought you couldn't, I thought you, I thought you couldn't miss God. I thought you couldn't, I thought you couldn't. Well, how people say one save always save. That's what I'm saying. So many people want to run the prophecy. I see, I see, I see. I see, I see, I see. Let me think. That's what they do. They, 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 they watch people in the church, and then they call you out. If they see you praising and praising God, like I seen the lady back there, I don't know her, but she was praising God. See, them preachers, they like, they like buzzers. They fly around the church and just see. So they say, I see you got the spirit all over you, just because she was dancing. And then you think that's a prophecy. Man, I seen that. He said, he said, God shall take away out of the part of the book of life. He said, and out of the holy city. And from the thing which was written in this book, he which testified these things, say, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Y'all know we ain't telling him to come right now. We got to get some things right. He said, let be fair. If we ask things of God and expect him to do them, shouldn't he be able to ask us? That's what I keep telling y'all. We be asking God, God, save my mama. God, get me, don't let my mama die. Don't let this. We be asking things of God. And he said, if you do it for me, God. We go to jail. God, if you can get me out of this, I'll never do it again. You get out of it. You know, a bail bomber told me one time, he said, man, I know God in the jail, in prison. I said, how you know that? He said, because everybody get him when they get, when they be in there. He said, but the only problem I got, preacher, he said, when they leave that, they leave me in there. Church people, what are we going to do with this Bible? And what are we going to do with it? He said, nobody put money <coughs> in a vending machine when it's out of order. So why would God put something in you when you're out of order? People prophesying to him, Jalen, I see God in you. Prophesy to him, man, I ain't finna prophesy nothing to Jalen. He out of order. You can't buy no chips out of jail. He ain't got no chain, and he ain't got no chips in it. That's what we do. We love being fooled. I don't want nobody fooling me. Help me. This is what it said in John 12. <coughs> don't be found outside of heaven, inside of hell. Well, you can't get no better than that. John 12, 46. Y'all got it? He said, I am come a light into the world. It's Jesus talking. He said, that whosoever believe on me should not abide in darkness. 
Y'all talk to me. Any of y'all buying a dog? Anything that's not like God is dog. So I want y'all to get a few because we'll say, oh, I don't smoke no more. I don't go to the club no more, but you lie. Oh, I don't lie, but you roll your eye. Huh? Church people. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible. Let me, let me come on and talk to you. He said, dog. He said, and if any man hear my word and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Y'all hear that? He that reject me and receive not my word, what I'm giving to y'all today, have one that judge him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Hebrews 9, 27. Y'all see it in the scripture? Did it just say that? It said, in the last day. Huh? Did it not say that? He said, in the last day, he said, for I have not spoken of myself, but the Father who sent me have gave me a commandment. What I should say, he gave me the message, and what I should speak, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father unto me, so speak. He said, that's what I do. I speak that. Reckless choice. What's the regular choice, Pastor? Facts. To show how one reckless choice to disobey God caused man to fall from God's favor. Your choice, not your mama, not your daddy, your choice. Once you hear God's word, he can rightly judge you. It don't matter. You, you ain't got to come back here no more. You can leave, go wherever you want to. God is sending a rat now word to him, a mercy word to him to keep you right with God. Because he know when we go out these doors, he know what the world look like. He know what the world offer you. He know. He know what your flesh like. That's why he talking against the flesh. He's telling you, the flesh and the spirit, they war, they contrary to one another. And you have both of them. And no matter what the spirit don't told you, flesh sitting right there. Oh, I already seen you. You ain't get rid of that number. Go on and call him. You know, you ain't got to go around him. Ain't nothing wrong with talking to him. You might can win him over. You ain't won them over 20 years. How you gonna win them over now? And then if you be honest, you already know you ain't that same. You ain't need to play. The principal, the principal, the principal, the principal, the principal. He said, to remember that disobedience to God leads to broken fellowship with him. Yeah. That's the principle. So anytime you go contrary to God's word, are you, what's that word here? You desensitize his word that it don't really mean that. Do you think God don't think that I'm a woman woman? Oh, he ain't got no problem with you woman a woman. I'm glad you want a woman don't want a man. And he ain't got no problem for a woman want a man. But not when it ain't you. And you know your friend talk to you. Well, child, our church let you do that. That was wrong. Your, your church let you do that. First Peter 4, as I come to a close, he said the application. First Peter 4 and 14, but the application. To realize that if we seek God blessing, then we must be prepared to obey him in all things. Don't be found outside of heaven, inside of hell. 1 Peter 4 and 14. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of the gospel, glory, 
and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. He said, but let no man suffer as a murderer. See, church people, we shouldn't be suffering. We shouldn't be killing each other in the church. We should be praying for each other, exalting each other, and making sure you right with God. He said, he said, suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer. You know, some people, you know, we got some thieving because some people steal their tire. Have an offer in their pocket, they steal that too. He said, they don't do that, do it. He said, or oh, as an evil doer, and as a busy body in other men's matter. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him be not ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that the judgment must begin at the house of God. He said, now, the judgment is going to begin at church. That's why God is trying to get us right, that we don't be uh, uh, by the wayside when God come back. Because he ain't going to the liquor store in the whole house. He coming to the church. He said, the judgment must begin at church. But now we so, we so, we so impressed because people lying, telling you they say. But right here, he said, for the time has come. That the judgment must begin at the house of God. I wonder if God finna judge the church already. Because I can't figure out why the church ain't having a church, but the preacher's still getting paid. And now they want people to, to bring the money to the church. Don't stop giving so the church can uh, help people. Man, y'all weren't helping nobody when the people were coming to church. Y'all stop lying. Y'all know y'all trying to make sure y'all getting y'all paid. Y'all ain't worried about helping nobody else. Y'all getting them big salaries so y'all can pay for them big houses y'all got. Don't lie. Just tell the truth. Tell them I want me, me. You ain't got to lie. That's what I'll be saying. This is what he said. He said, for the time is come that the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be for them that obey not the gospel? Yeah. What's going to be for them that walked away from the truth? Or that decided that they rather want the world more than they want that? That's what I tell everybody. I don't know how nobody can know that the other half ain't right. But you'll pick the other half over God. I know, I know the Bible said that if, if the unsaved person want to stay, that's good. But we talking about when both of y'all say y'all saved. That's a, that. If I go crazy, do all crowd of crazy stuff, I pray that Trina put me out. Don't go to hell for me. Don't, don't do it. Because I ain't going for her, I promise you. He said, and if first, if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous, if apostles scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? He said, where? And our people trying to tell you, oh, you good. You ain't got to worry about it. God love everybody. He do. But he ain't the one put you in hell. You put yourself there. Don't put that on God. We quick to put something on God. Don't twist the word. To fit your lifestyle, you should untwist your life to fit the word. We try to twist God's word to fit up, but when you die, you still want to go to heaven. I told the church a couple of weeks ago that if you think hell going to be full and I'm going to be in heaven, God, don't worry about it. Give me that shovel right there. I'm going to make some room in hell for you because you ain't sliding into heaven. I'm going to dig that hole for you. I'm going to dig you enough space so you can go to hell because you, you didn't live enough for God trying to wait the hell fill up. 
Hell ain't gonna fill up. Don't you, don't you hear it say? It, she enlarged herself. She opened her mouth without measure. Hell ain't gonna fill up. But y'all ain't never read nothing in the Bible where Helmut got that Lord is. He already know what he was making it for. Church people. Talk to me. But be your doer of the word, not a hear only, deceiving your own self. James 4 and 17 said, Therefore to him that knows to do good, and do it not, it is sin. So that means once you know what the words say and don't do it, it is sin. Isaiah 48 and 22 said, There is no peace, said the Lord, for the wicked. You can serve yourself all you want. There is no peace for you. And you sit around waiting on peace, it ain't coming. And as a close, oh, Galatians 3 and 3, oh, fool of Galatia, who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Church people, what we going to do with the Bible?